Oh, hi, Mommy. Want to play? A lot of children have imaginary friends. And oftentimes, it's a uh, positive experience. Is there anything we can do to help him be less, you know, destructive? You could try playing with him more at home. Hello. Hey. Oh, I'm there. Holy cow. <laughs> Hi. Hey, how's it going? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Just sticking out the heat in Chicago. We have a major heat wave going on. So. Oh, man. Oh, I've been in Chicago in the summer. It's hot. Oh, yeah. Like that humidity when it gets going, <laughs> it's like you're staying I'm inside. From that whole, I'm from that neck of the woods, like across from Detroit kind of thing. And so I know. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, you know the Midwest. You know how it gets in the summer. Yeah. In the winters, it's all snowy and cold and freezing. <laughs> you never win, right? <laughs> no, but I love Chicago. There you go. Yeah, it's a fun city with great food. Yes. <laughs> Where are you at currently? Vancouver. Oh, Vancouver. Nice. Do you live there or just... Uh... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, that's where I live. Very Good nice. old Saint Canada. <laughs> Did you grow up there or just move there uh, later? No, I grew up in Ontario mm -hmm. and uh, moved here kind of during the end of the X-Files era. I sort of missed it, unfortunately, but that was what drew me out here. There you go. I mean, you could have perked a lot, picked a lot worse places in Vancouver, that's for sure, you know? Pretty true. Oh, wow. First of all, I kind of got surprised. You have the blonde hair going right now. I, I was kind of expecting a brunette version yeah. of you. <laughs> Sort of, yeah. What's left of it that's brown. It's really not brown anymore. <laughs> it, it looks it looks very well done, so that too. So <laughs> as if you're going to an actual premiere even though it's Zoom. <laughs> I try, you know, I try to at least Well, I appreciate the effort. A bit together. It's different. It's still an adjustment period. You know, usually we'd be doing this face to face or whatnot, and now everything's kind of virtual. Are you adjusting to the virtual world, or how does that still feel? Um, I don't know. I guess, yeah, it's fine. I think it opens up. A, I mean, look, for a long time, I've been asking why it mattered where any actor lives, and now this mm -hmm. proves that you can just be anywhere and just audition, and it's bullshit that anybody has to be in one particular location you know so in those ways i think it's opened up a whole world for everybody not just you know me being staying in canada or whatever else mm -hmm. um the online school is a little harder with my kids and uh you know i tested for a series online like zooming and that was weird i didn't love that you know taking meetings that way is not the same as doing press i would say but look it is mm -hmm. what it is and this is where we're at and um so you just you do what you can do yeah, I mean, I, at this point, you would think, you know, with, with LA not, not being really a hub anymore with Vancouver, Atlanta, all these spots kind of opening up as places where films and shows are being done, you know, being in one spot is kind of difficult these days, you know, if you want to just hunker down in one place, you kind of have to be willing to, uh, you Turn know, around. yeah, in a lot of yeah. ways too. I mean, casting central is still going to be Los Angeles and yeah. that's where the casting directors are. And I suppose for them to know you well, it's best if you're there. But uh, it just goes to show you that you can audition from anywhere and, and that hopefully will open up a world of possibilities for myself and everybody. Yeah, no, it's a different world than when you started, right? I mean, yeah, look, true. yeah. Oh my goodness. I was just remembering back to the days of the final destination, you know, uh, I remember you from there and, and you know the crazy thing is how everyone's like it was such a kind of a compelling movie and franchise it was really kind of one of those first franchises that kind of spawned off a lot of other like horror franchises in a lot of ways mm -hmm. but to see where all of you kind of ended up like there's so many success stories so many people from that show became stars and you know just had great careers I mean when you look back at it now does it feel like a lifetime ago and to see kind of your your formal castmates and, and see what they've done since and their lives kind of how it evolved I mean yeah everything that you've done back in the day you know that was a that was a long time ago it was mm -hmm. before I had kids and uh it feels like a million years ago in lots of ways, but I hear about it almost every week. Somebody will send me a picture of like a logging truck or something. So it obviously has long legs. 
Mm -hmm. do, do you stay touch with any of your castmates from, from the movies or? Not really that one, no. And it's been, you know, 15 years. I think yeah. almost all of those, those guys are all in LA, right? And I'm in Vancouver, so. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Z, how'd you, I, I never thought a letter would be this intimidating, you know, to spawn <laughs> off something like that. I really enjoyed it. Can I, you say it the Canadian way? Tell me about Z. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. There's a pronunciation thing too, right? Depends yeah. where I've never said, well, I suppose when I was a kid, I probably said Z, but uh -huh. for whatever reason, that that's the one, like the one place I'm not very Canadian. It's, I have always said Z. Um, yeah. So what do you want to know? Oh, how did you get involved with it? I thought it was a really interesting and fun film and, you know, it, it I love genres like that because there's always a surprise lurking somewhere, you know, and you yeah. know, especially when, you know, also kind of a two part question. Um, how do you enjoy working with kids? Because because uh, horror kind of has become a genre where, where kids are like kind of manifesting these creatures in a lot of ways and these, these evil spirits. Yeah. Like you're seeing a lot of movies now, um, uh, you know, that kind of are led by kids in a lot of ways. Um, what is it like kind of to be part of that genre? And um, how did you get involved with this movie in particular? Uh, you know, I think working with kids, heck, sometimes it's that's easier than working with adults. They don't have big egos yet, um, and their parents are there. Um, you know, I, how I got involved is just I, I got a call from my agent. There's a, you know, they're interested in you for the lead in this. Have a look. I read it, and I just almost despite the fact that it was a horror film, because sometimes it can be, you know, they can be schlocky or they can be, sure. you know, not really well um knit together mm -hmm. and I just saw a journey for that character for that woman I saw that she was going to go from here to here to here or vice versa I suppose um and I was really interested in, in what that was going to take to play um to challenge myself and to just show that I could carry the lead in the film so I was really happy about it you know, being a mother yourself, does it kind of bring out some motherly kind of experiences in a sense, you know, to this character in a lot of ways? Because if you, like you say, if, if this was, movie was done because you wouldn't get the part, but back in the Final Destination days, there's a whole different approach, maturity that, you know, that you grow with age and experiences that you would know how to now approach a role like this versus when you kind of started. I think certainly having a kid that's pretty much the same age as Jet, mm -hmm. uh, that was just, I don't know, it just sort of translates across. As a mother, you know how to be around a kid and how to talk to them. And I just, you know, from the get-go, we just were, we were a team and that was how it was. He, and to his credit too, he's a, a professional young man and he's got a great family and he's been around the block. And so it was just, it was just another day on set really. Mm -hmm. I always wondered with, with like thrillers and horror franchise, what is it like on a set for, for a movie? It does it differ from, from doing a different sort of genre. Is there kind of specificity since, since you've done a lot of different sort of genres and characters, is there a difference on a set of a thriller where there's so much always, cause we see it at home, you know, every moment is, is something you're waiting for something to happen, but is the set kind of similar to any other genres or is there a noticeable difference? No, I think it feels pretty much the same as any other set. Um, yeah, it's it's just another day at work, really, when you think about it, other than the emotional content of it, which was heavy. Um, but you can have that in any any genre. And it just feels like another day. And, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, was it scary shooting that? And you're like, you know, it's... <laughs> the same way that like love scenes in a movie it, are like the least sexy thing you right. do. Right, camera crews it's all over. Not scary. To, yeah, it's not scary to shoot horror because nothing is happening. You know, you're. It's all made up. You're imagining everything about it. Um, so, what's important is that it translates for the audience, and it certainly seems to have done so for this film. Mm -hmm. But does it make it actually difficult for an actor to kind of imagine these things versus in a movie where a drama you have an actor to work off and a lot of these movies it's CGI it's it's yeah. like a stick hole you know with a, something on the stick a ball on a stick and you have to imagine these things what is that approach for you as an actor to kind of envision so much of what's supposed to happen. 
Um, well, first of all, I think uh, that's our job is to conjure from the ether some emotions mm -hmm. or experiences. And yes, is it easier when somebody is sitting across from you? Generally, yes, as long as they're a good scene partner. Um, I think doing lots of green screen on Once Upon a Time certainly prepared me for what it was like to be in a scene with something that didn't exist, that wasn't mm -hmm. there. Um, and then beyond that, it, it all boils down to your homework. And I did and do in general a lot of work on backstory and where I think that character has come from and what's caused these various layers of pain. And I just rely on the work that I've done when I get to set, I've, I've done my homework. And so I know where that character needs to be. And I have like all this, you know, my script is always got all these little tabs all over so that I know what's happening and where we are in the arc. And um, it's really just doing your homework. So you're one to mark the scripts and just kind of outline them. You like doing that sort of approach? Oh, my scripts are filled. I probably still even have, oh, did I get rid of that script? I don't know. They're just filled with little, because I need to know also, when am I yeah. shooting? Oh, that scene where I have to cry. Oh, good. That's not for 10 more days. I don't have to worry about it. Um, and so it's, I, it's always got little tabs and dividers, and I just have a system that I, I work with, and that's how I roll. You know, I'm always kind of amazed and fascinated by it. Because sometimes, you know, in this industry, careers could be fleeting. You could be on top one day and then, you know, a year later, you get no work. You've managed to carve out a heck of a career and to have the longevity, which is difficult in this industry, to have, to do a lot of different projects, to do a lot of genres, characters, and to maintain it. What has been kind of your approach throughout your career that you've maybe taken to continue getting work? Because that's a difficult uh, part of this job. It's voodoo. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think uh, part of it's, I don't know. So much of it is luck. So much of it mm -hmm. is just the, 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 it's just fortune. And to some degree, what is available to me because I made the choice to stay here in Vancouver. Yeah. Um, I think I just never got pigeonholed into any particular place. And I think some of that comes from, you know, my ability to play a lot of different characters and because I love comedy and so I would be the funny girl in the drama or I love messed up characters, which is why I liked Elizabeth in this movie because she just was mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, you couldn't ask for more messed up than this woman was. True. Um, to be able to kind of like get your fingers into some dirty, yucky things. I love those roles. I love junkies. I loved, you know, prostitutes. The things I don't love is like, oh, she's the loving mom. She's mm -hmm. Jake's loving wife, Emily. I hate those. I, those are like the least interesting things on earth to me. And so I always gravitated towards roles that were left of center and quirky and edgy. And, um, and perhaps that's what's allowed me to have a long career. Well, it's true to life too. You know, you see some of these characters who are so like cookie cutter and vanilla that that these, like, the messed up characters, these things, these are real people in a lot of, that's where Best you relate one. to these, you relate to these yeah. things, because it's like, it's humanity, it's real life, you know, where none of us are ideal or perfect in any way, to kind of see that, it's more relatable, I feel. Yeah. You know, with the, the industry's changed so much with, with streaming, and, and just like, you know, you can look back in your career, where do you think we are now at a point, obviously with the whole pandemic and stuff, but how have you seen the industry change over the years? And you think it's kind of headed for the better? Now we have so many more options, I think, of getting content and putting it out there. How do you kind of feel, in a sense, looking back from where you started to now? Are we headed in a better direction in terms for an actor and even, because um, we know we're getting content, but what has it been like for you? Uh, you know, I think it feels like in some ways more of the same. In some ways, the landscape has obviously changed as well it should have, um, such that more people get to play right now, right? And so mm -hmm. for me, there are the opportunities are not the same as what they have been. Um, and I think what I think is marvelous going forward is that the opportunities for women have finally arrived having come up through this industry at a time when seeing a woman on a set that was not in hair, makeup or wardrobe or a script supervisor, that was, it was like seeing a unicorn somewhere on set. Wow. I remember the first time I saw a female DOP, I was like, I, I don't like my brain couldn't even compute that. I'd never seen that. I'd seen maybe five in the first 10 years of my career. I maybe worked with five female directors. 
And we're not talking about like 30, 40 years ago. We're talking about, you know, pretty recent past. Yes, you know? as early as, so let's call it the late 90s. Yeah. You still were not seeing any women. You were barely seeing women producers. You did not see women directors. You certainly did not see women on the camera crews. And so now that has changed. Now you are seeing women in all of the different roles. And I think it's about time. And I think that's the thing that's the most interesting to me. I think for, for me is the most substantial um, way forward that is impactful to me. I mean, you're going to talk to a different actor, for example, like I have actor friends who uh, are of various ethnicities who before were not working as leads because it was always a white lead, right? Well, yeah. now that's not the way anymore. And um, so it's a time for all of these kind of underserved groups, whether they be ethnic or in my case, I think as a woman, now I have an opportunity to direct and, and that's super interesting to me. And I really wish it's something that had been available to me much, much earlier. I was always interested I just there didn't seem to be a path the way that there is now. Mm -hmm. So would and you that will change what we see as content, right? If, totally. if uh, white men have been telling the story for all of TV time, well, now you're going to see Latina women, or you're going to see or men. You know, it doesn't. It's not just about being women, but you're going to see other perspectives. And I think that that is the most important and relevant change as we move forward. That you're finally going to see stories told from myriad different perspectives and um, I love that like when I see a show that tells me about something I didn't know before like I started mm -hmm. watching Lovecraft the other day I'm like you don't understand how African Americans lived in that era or this one for that matter um, mm -hmm. because that was a perspective that wasn't being told and now it is and I think that that's tremendously important sorry that was a very long-winded no no that's a really good perspective. That. That, that's that's your experience you know and that that's valid in so many ways and you do see that with the content we're seeing now you know with so many different perspectives I think that's where it comes down to its perspectives that are finally yeah. seen that are one-sided you know or one narrow uh, in that way would you like to do some uh, behind the scenes stuff directing producing did you ever think of writing I mean is this something that's, you're interested everything in? everything that I'm doing from here forward is that's the that's the core of it I have mm -hmm. uh, a pilot that's kind of making its way out in the world right now I have a second pilot that I'm trying to get out there I have a feature film that I'm meant to direct at the end of this year I have uh, my short film that I had previously directed I have another one that I'm working on right now I mean being a creator is absolutely the direction that I'm headed in I want a position of power I'm tired of sitting in this chair where you wait and see what gets you know who says yes to you mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that doesn't exist at these other levels either but it gives me an opportunity to use my brain and my intelligence and my creative spirit in a way that you just can't as an actor you're just at the mercy of this business as an actor and yep. I'm I'm a thousand percent over that so I'm I want to be out there making my own things yeah and finally wanted to ask you what were some things you enjoy to do in your free time any hobbies or interests that you have to when you're not working on any projects or away from the industry any sort of things you like to clear your mind to uh yeah i mean gosh i love my garden in the summer i'm like a little gardening nerd and i'm always have been a reader and i really am studying the craft of film right now i love Whitewater rafting has been a long time passion. So I try to get out on the river at least once a year and be out in nature. I love being out in the woods in Vancouver and hiking and running and, you know, all of those kinds of things where you shut off your business brain. It's still going in the background and coming up with, oh, there's my script. It's right there. It's back in there, but I got to go for a walk to get it out. You know, <laughs> um, all of those kinds of things. I think it's, it's all part of like the flow of, of being a creative. I think most people who are creatives would say the same. Yeah, you're, you're just not an actor in real life. You know, to bring in rich characters and be a good performer, you need to have a rich real life, you know, and bring Absolutely. these everyday experiences to the to your work, you know, because if yeah. some people are like, oh, I'm just an actor, like, no, that's not a thing. You know, you need to be a human first in order to, to be a good actor. Yeah, for sure. I can't think of anything more boring than an actor who's never lived much life, you know. Yeah, in focus. What are you growing, by the way? What sort of things are you growing in your garden? God, what am I not growing? I have like a 10 foot tall uh, sunflower out my window wow. that's finally blooming. And 
like every herb, I, you know, tomatoes. I got all the fruits, uh, raspberries and blueberries and strawberries and salal and cucumbers and peas and beans. Wow, you gotta, <laughs> you can grow your own food pretty much in that Flowers sense. And bumblebees and all that. So there you go. Well, my yeah. mother's helping me too. I mean, I have some stuff. I have a tomato here, a tree, a little yeah. tomato going too. So I'm taking Very care nice. of that. <laughs> it does For, me good. You get up in the morning and you check all their little Yes. And you can pluck one out. You know, if there's a tomato, I think I just, there's right here. I've done something right. It's all right. See, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, baby steps, you know? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. I've been a long time fan, really enjoyed your work. Another, you know, awesome job. Uh, this is a really fun film and just always thanks. excited to see you uh, working and see what's next for you. Now with the, you know, behind the scenes too. So that's really awesome that, that you're pursuing that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Keep an eye out for me. Hopefully I'll have a film on the circuit, you know, in a year or so and uh, we, we can sit down again. Yes. Yes. Looking forward. I, I fully expect that. I fully expect you to be continuing <laughs> bringing stuff out. So uh, stay safe uh, and, and the best to you and your family you too. and, and um, hope we reconnect. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye, Kian. It's using your son to try to reconnect with you. Right up.